Hi everyone, uh, Franz Rotenbach here and in this second uh, video in the series on the rope memory modules we're going to look at the construction and the internal configuration of the rope memory modules. The memory modules of the computer are made using a basic component which is a donut shaped magnetic core. Now this core will be placed into a component holder like so. Mm -hmm. Now after the component holder has been completely loaded with cores we're then ready to do the wiring. In order to perform the wiring operation, we store about 20 feet of wire in this needle. Oh, See yeah. how that wire oh, comes out yeah. of there? Mm -hmm. Now the operator will take a core holder and pass the needle through the core, around to the other side, and then weave it back through a different position. Mm -hmm. Now let's watch how the girls do this operation in a little more detail. Now here we have a pair of girls who are wiring the address wiring of the core rope module. Now they pass the wire back and forth, stored in the needle, and put it through the cores in a particular wiring pattern. Now each time the wire goes through, they must very carefully wrap the wire around one of those little nylon pins. As you can see, what that does is pull the wire away from the center of the core to allow room to pass the needle through again. I see. Now these uh, address wires go to every single core? That's right. Now when the wire is completely uh, weaved into the rope, it must be terminated on a little solder terminal. Now the girl strips the insulation from the wire and very carefully wraps it around the pin. Then they use a magnifying glass to inspect their work. Mm -hmm. Now the sense wiring information, or the wiring that contains the program of the fixed memory, is performed by using this machine. The machine indexes to a particular location of a core, and then the girl passes the needle through the aperture and allows, uh, provides the wire to go through the right core. She doesn't have to think about which core it goes through next. No, the machine does that for her. Now note, each time the wire passes through, that little aperture jogs down and pulls the wire around one of the nylon pins. Mm -hmm. When she passes the needle through, she will trip the switch with the needle, which causes a tape reader to advance. There's the tape reader, and that in turn causes the coro plane to move its position. Now, after all the wiring is completed, these nylon pins that we use to temporarily hold the wire can now be removed. Next, we must press the wires very gently down into place so we'll be able to fold up the whole assembly. Now this operator is holding the core planes into a sandwich type construction and laying them into the header of the module. Now we're ready for electrical test. We must ensure that every wire and every component are properly located. The operator puts it, the module into this piece of special test equipment and a program stored on paper tape is then used to exercise the module. I mean, you, you put that uh, potting compound all over this, too? Yes. Now, in the final form, here's the module potted, and it's all ready to be plugged into the <coughs> memory tray assembly. The video showing the manufacturing of the rope memory modules um, revealed a lot of very useful information. Um, you could clearly see on the video that there were four headers um, or frames uh, that contained all the magnetic cores. Um, you could also see the cores being placed into the headers and, and the tool that was used to do the wiring. Um, the video went into a lot of detail on how the modules were wired. And if you look at the video very closely, um, you can learn a lot about how the memory modules um, actually worked. Um, unfortunately, um, there were a lot of things that wasn't shown. Uh, for instance, um, the module actually contained a whole bunch of diodes and, and none of these were shown on the video. Um, but uh, towards the end of the video you could make out uh, the diode matrix uh, at the bottom of the module. Uh, you can see the, the, the ends of the diodes there. Uh, so the only way that to really know what's, what's going on inside of the rope memory uh, would be to x-ray it. Well, I just happen to know a very good uh, cardiologist who owns his own hospital and with all the greatest and latest x-ray equipment available and he kindly agreed to x-ray the rope memory modules for me. 
So one Saturday morning, I took the rope memory module to his hospital. Uh, we dressed up in these really cool leaded safety clothing that protected us from the from the X-rays, and um, we proceeded to place the rope memory modules on the on the operating table in his theatre, and we scanned it from all all the sides and looked at it from every possible angle. Um, I also had a few other interesting modules that I x-rayed as well uh, and I will show these modules in a future video. Uh, so the, the x-rays confirmed without doubt that the module that I had was exactly the same um, as the modules that were shown in, in the video. You could clearly see the four headers that contains the, the cores and the diodes in the lower section of the module. Um, when when viewed from the top uh, you can see the cores laid uh, overlaid one another uh, looking almost like little helical coils um, and the little black dots are the diodes viewed from the top and it was actually quite easy to count the number of diodes um, so everything was there and and it looked exactly like the manufacturing video well, I then created this model of the, the rope memory module based on what um, I learned from the video and the x-rays. Um, the bottom part of the module uh, consists of the connection pins that I'm not showing here. Uh, the area between the pins are taken up by the diodes mounted vertically between two printed circuit boards. Um, uh, this, was a, uh, this is a typical cordwood construction method that was used in, in many of the Apollo uh, circuit boards. I calculated that there should have been 384 diodes in each rope memory module. The x-ray sh actually showed 386 diodes. So I'm not really sure why there were two extra diodes and, and if they were even connected. Uh, and it really wasn't uh, an uncommon thing in the Apollo hardware designs to, to add extra components that were never wired in. Uh, and it was often easier just to leave the extra unused components in rather than changing the manufacturing process or going through all the paperwork. So the rest of the rope memory module is taken up by uh, the four headers uh, with uh, f the 512 cores. Uh, uh, each header contained 128 cores and these were placed in four rows of 32 cores each. Um, each of the uh, cores were threaded with the address wires as well as the actual sense or, or the data wires. Um, the sense wires uh, defined the actual software that had to be wired into the module so these could only be wired with the assistance of a computer um, as seen in the, in the video. It is interesting to know that the maximum number of wires threaded uh, or threading a single core could be as high as 128 uh, sense wires. Uh, and that doesn't even include the address wires. Um, but it is, is, it's very unlikely that this extreme edge case would have happened and later versions of the rope memories actually had up to 192 sense wires without any issues. But this is certainly a complicated looking maze of wiring in here. That certainly is, John. That module contains 512 cores and over a half a mile of wire. And it performs the function of storing over 65,000 individual pieces of information.